well, hello, everyone. Um, I'm here with my colleague, Dylan, and uh, we're going to kind of discuss spring cover crop forage options. You know, springtime's upon us. We're at mid-March here. Uh, temperatures are warming up and just wanted to kind of talk through some options. So, Dylan, could you um, maybe walk us through some of the different cover crop mixes that you're putting together for guys right now? Yeah, absolutely. Nathan, I'd be happy to do that. So I'll, I'll walk you guys, I'll walk everybody through um, kind of what I like to put together for a pretty general uh, forage mix, spring forage mix. You know, there's certainly different uh, custom mixes we can do depending on your situation, but this is a general mix that I like to put together. Um, I, I would start, uh, if, if you want, you can get you can get on our smart mix calculator at smartmix.greencoverseed.com. I actually utilize this daily because it's a really great quote tool for me to put put together quotes just even as a sales rep. Uh, I have an account already, but it'll ask you to start an account and then you want to go into to start a mix. And from here, we'll name our mix. For this one, we'll, we'll call it Grandpa's uh, East 40 for a, kind of a fun name. And uh, we'll call it 40 acres worth. We're gonna have no irrigation. This is my this is my hometown zip code. You can put whatever zip code is your hometown, and from there it'll kind of calculate average rainfall, frost dates, and give you a better idea of what what species may work better in your area. Um, we'll go to bagging option for this. We'll put it in the tote bag. We are not certified organic, but if you are, you can certainly click yes. Uh, you have three different options for seeding: drilled, broadcast, and broadcast with incorporation. And incorporation could mean tillage. Maybe you're you're spreading it for cattle to trample in. But for this example, we're going to do a drilled um, cover. And I think probably the next cash crop would be wheat. Generally, that's what most guys are going to be going to after spring forage mix. There's just not enough time to get a spring cash crop in generally behind one of these mixes, especially if you're grazing it. So we'll leave it at seeding today and, and just be out there for about two months. There's three different goals you can select. You're only required to select one, and that's what we'll do for now. And, and we'll just call it supplemental grazing. A lot of these species will, will take care of a lot of goals um, just by even focusing on, on one goal. Um, from there, uh, you'll, there, you have the Smart Mix Auto Adjust button. If this is your first time, I would leave that on. I leave it on until I get my species selected, and then I shut it off and, and kind of adjust my my pounds from there. From there, you're going to want to add your species. You've got excellent, good, marginal, and risky categories. Uh, uh, most generally, if you're probably staying in the excellent to good, that's probably where you need to be. Um, as we're looking at legumes, my two favorite legumes for a, a grazing mix is going to be spring forage peas because they're got great protein, highly mycorrhizal, very good for the soil, really brings those mycorrhizal colonies together. And then crimson clover, nice crimson, nice clover that will put on pretty big leaves and, and a lot of tons out there for you. When I look at grasses, I look at probably your most common spring, spring grass, and that's going to be spring oats. Again, highly mycorrhizal, good tonnage, high quality feed. And then to kind of fill in, um, I, I like to find uh, some annual ryegrass, small seed, but very leafy, very leafy, uh, texture. Um, again, high quality forage can, can really bring some tons into that mix. And then when I'm selecting brassicas, my go-to is going to be kale and collards. And that's just mainly for their, for their leaf texture, very palatable leaf, big leaf, a lot of, a lot of forage there for those cattle. And probably the two broad leaves that you could select would be flax or facilia. Flax cattle aren't really going to touch, which is okay. Um, it, it leaves some it leaves some residue out there um, for that next cash crop. Again, another high mycorrhizal mycorrhizal product. Nice puts on a nice blue flower that can contract beneficial pollinators. Uh, the facilia will do that as well. Um, if this is going to be a haying option, I would not select flax. I would go with facilia. Flax, you may have some issues with with haying that product. But with this being a grazing product, we're going to select flax. So yeah, with the auto mix adjust button on it, it just auto adjusts and divides these out evenly to, to get close to 125% of a full rate. So you can see the full rate percentage here of each one is at 18%. And that's that number is 
that number is taking this number here divided by the full rate of if this was planted as a mono. So three pounds of crimson, crimson clover is 18%. And then you can look over here. This gives you the details of the mix, um, acres, uh, acres area, what it's going to be bagged in, how you're going to be uh, drilling it or planting it, next cash crop and your growing period. As you get down here to pounds and pounds per acre, I, I don't really, when I'm making mixes, I don't look at this too much. I look at the seeds per acre and the seeds per square foot. Uh, it gives me a better idea of, it helps me visualize better what, what we're doing. And I try to stick around a million, million and a half seeds per acre. And I think that puts you around, oh, somewhere around 20, 25 seeds per square foot. <clears throat> and this would be your mix density of, of the, of the mix. And it can walk you through the full rate of legumes, grasses, brassicas, the weight and the percentage of the seeds. So if I'm going to really customize this mix, this is generally a, a mix that I, I put together two pounds of clover, about eight pounds of spring forage peas. I'll do two pounds of ryegrass and probably anywhere from 30 to 35 pounds of hay and oats, you know, just depending on, on where you're at and your rainfall environment. When it comes to the brassicas, I like a pound and a half of total brassicas. So I do about a pound of collards and a half pound of kale. My flax, since it's not much of a grazer, just more of a soil, soil beneficiary, I, I put it at about three pounds. And as you can see, that puts us at about a million and a half seeds per acre. So probably in a more rain fed environment, irrigated situation, this is where I'd be. Um, I may I may knock some of these down a little bit just to get that seeding rate down a little bit in a, in a drier area. But that's, Nathan, that's generally the mix I like to put together. Any thoughts or comments? Yeah, I think that's really good. Um, like you said, what guys need to consider on those seeding rates, you know, the, their fertility, their soils, the, the moisture situation. Um, I think that million to million and a half is kind of that sweet spot. You, you, uh, you know, the more seeds you put out there, likely the more tonnage you're going to get. So, but also the more of the seed mix is going to cost. So there's going to be a trade-off there. Um, you know, a couple other species, I think a lot of guys could or should consider this time of year, you know, spring barley, spring triticale, um, those, those other cereal options. But I think this is good. This is an opportunity to build some soil, you know, improve organic matter, you know, provide that protection. Um, but also, like you said, we're providing forage. Guys should, should consider, you know, potential hay mixes. You know, hay inventories are at some record lows in a lot of states. We're, we're coming out of this drought of last year. We have some moisture now. You know, guys should look at opportunities to take advantage of some of um, some of that moisture and maybe beef up some hay inventories. So, yeah, I think that's that's really good. And hopefully that's helpful to uh, to our customers out there. So thanks for thanks for walking us through that. All right. Thanks, Nathan. Yeah, we'll see you later. Thanks, everyone. Bye.